We see in our gospel today that the apostles had just come back to report to our Lord about how they did in going to the neighboring towns and villages, preaching repentance and curing the sick and expelling demons. They were so successful that people were coming to them in great numbers, so much so that the 12 didn't even have time to have anything to eat. I know that most of us priests don't exactly look like we're starving, okay? But I can tell you that for many of us, there have been plenty of times when we were so busy with ministry, we didn't have time to eat. It happens. And many of you, with work and school and kids and sports and, of course, the six to eight hours a day you spend on YouTube and Facebook and video games, you might find you too don't have much time to eat either. And so our Lord Jesus tells the apostles, he tells us today, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. There's something quite wonderful that is implied by our Lord Jesus with this suggestion. The rest that Jesus wants all of us to have it should be in a deserted place, meaning a place to be alone together. It's a great image. It's also a great piece of advice. We, along with the apostles back then, can have Jesus all to ourselves. Jesus invites us to not only share in that sort of rest, but to share in his rest. Now, what do I mean by his rest? We have to be able to recommit ourselves to prayer, of course, but also to silence. You see, praying and having good long moments of silence is not some sort of distraction from the real work that we have to get done. It's actually resting with Jesus. And this rest, more properly called spiritual rest, is so important, it drives and maintains everything else about us. You see, when we get our spiritual rest, we can have true rest for our minds, our hearts, even our bodies. So how does this work? All of us, no matter how old we are, we need to have true leisure, true spare time. The key to all of this is what our Lord told us, go to a deserted place. So does that mean that we have to head out to the desert or go up to the mountaintop? Well, sometimes. Let's take a deeper look at what Jesus means by having true leisure, true spiritual rest. So let's start with the obvious. Where? is one of the most deserted places in town, a place where there is silence and hardly anybody around to bug you. Yeah, that's right, here in church, right here in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Come on a weekday afternoon, you got the place to yourself. Now you would think if people, especially those of us who are Catholics, would tr truly let the impact of the fact hit us that the real presence of Jesus is right here, that God himself is Right there. There'd be lines at the door, wouldn't you think? The church would be packed 24-7, wouldn't you think? I mean, really, if people could come and be in the presence of God and not have to wait to go back home to heaven, well, then why is the church or any Catholic church not packed all day long? One of the answers why is what St. Francis of Assisi once said. Love is not loved. Jesus is not fully loved because we're too busy too distracted, too hurt, too full of excuses. So in the meantime, church is a great place to come during the week to spend some good quality time with Jesus. But there are other deserted places we can go. If you want to develop true leisure to get some great spiritual rest, well, go to the park, or to a garden, to the woods, to a stream, to a front porch. Go somewhere quiet You'll be free to gaze, to truly see, to, to ponder. So many of us have forgotten what that's like. And so we have to become more like the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary is great in so many ways in her humility, in her obedience, in her words and actions. But Mary is truly great in her amazing ability to hold, almost if, if in her hands, reality and to ponder it. Now, sure, we live in a world of action and sounds and so many words being thrown our way. But if all those things quickly become just mere activity, mere running around, a whole bunch of empty words, we won't have true moments of stillness and quiet. We have to be able to do what Mary does. We have to be able to behold. I learned a great lesson growing up from both sides of my family. Whether it was in the small northeastern New Mexico town of Clayton, where my mom is from, 
or in the bigger East Coast city of Auburn, New York, where my dad is from, a great teaching in true leisure in spiritual rest came from a front porch. Both sets of my grandparents would often just set out in the front porch. My mom's parents, they were in Clayton, that cattle town, be rocking in their chairs, holding a fly swat on their hands, not saying a word. One of those little, little pests stopped for just, just a second, whack, went back to rocking. My father's parents in New York, oftentimes my uncle as well, sit on the porch, not even saying a word, watching the crows fly back and fill up the tree before the sun went down, or just sitting there, just taking it all in. Now as a kid, if we were in Clayton or in Auburn, we were on vacation, meaning we were there to do something. But yet coming out to the front porch, there were these very wise people not doing anything, just watching the occasional cars pass by. Here's the great lesson my grandparents taught. You have to learn, actually learn, how to do nothing. That's right, nothing. Now, for some of you right now who have to fill every waking moment with something to do, your minds are about ready to be blown. You gotta get the dust pans out, ready? You can be blowing minds here, okay? You have to learn how to do nothing so that our leisure time can actually become something. You see, when you just sit out in the front porch or on a rock by a flowing stream or in a pew in front of the Blessed Sacrament, your silence, your quiet time, your doing nothing can become something and something great, but something that the world may see as useless. Because what is produced in leisure? Because leisure can produce things. Well, poetry, music, laughter, games, prayer, and some of the deepest insights from God that you will ever receive. Here's an example of how this works. And many of you who are parents and grandparents, you know this very well. How many of you have stopped, just actually stopped to just be quiet, to silence everything in your head after a long day with the three-year-old that was filled with noise and laughter and tears and timeouts and just stopped to behold, to ponder as that little kid is now sound asleep. The innocence, the pure goodness of that moment puts everything into proper perspective. You just look, you behold, and you realize that this lovable creature sleeping in front of you has more to do with real life than anything you could ever achieve at school or at work. For at that moment, your silence, your doing nothing produces something great. You see more than a child. God allows you to see eternity. And that immortal soul in front of you who cried and whined most of the day changes you. In that moment of gazing, you're doing nothing, but something truly blessed is happening. And of course, this could happen while beholding a sunset, or especially here in Albuquerque, watching the mountains blush, or even an armchair looking out the window, seeing the birds sleeping on the telephone line, wondering how are they not falling off. The great theologian Romano Gardini, he once wrote, truth can be recognized only from silence. Now, some of you are recognizing and identifying what I'm talking about right now. Say, yeah, I know, that sounds pretty good, Father. But those of you who are like nodding your heads going, yeah, that sounds good, you're more than likely the older ones in the congregation here today. Those of you who are young right now, you're tempted right now to get up and just start yelling at me. Father, are you serious, man? Sitting on a front porch? Boring. Walking in a garden? I ain't pulling no weeds, baby. I'd rather be playing something on my smartphone or checking out how I'm doing on my Instagram. Recreation takes many forms, and there is a time and place for YouTube and video games and just sitting around watching TV. But those are not really leisure, and it's certainly not opportunities for spiritual rest. Why is that? Because those things can become an indulgence, and indulgence is not leisure. Okay, what, what is indulgence again? Indulgence means to yield to your desires, to gratify, to be filled with all sorts of things. So if you have your nose in front of the TV or in front of the tablet, in front of the desktop screen, you're not doing nothing. 
In fact, you're doing something. You're being filled with all sorts of stuff, and let's be honest, a lot of stuff is not good for you. You're indulging yourself. No, no, if you want spiritual rest, and let's face it, we all need spiritual rest, you gotta turn things off. You gotta unplug. It's not gonna kill you. And if it does, I'll give you a nice funeral amount. I'll make everybody cry, okay? All right? Get up and go watch the sunrise. Well, I sleep in. Well, well, get up early tomorrow, man. Turn off the artificial light from that computer screen and go see the natural light of the day. And perhaps in that moment of silence, you'll come to see the light of God himself, a light for your mind, your heart, and your soul. And tonight, go out and look at the stars for a while. What if it's raining? Okay, okay, no more excuses, man. Go look at the stars. Look to the heavens. This will not only help you to love better, this will help you to realize how much you are loved. Now, some of you might not feel that God loves you or really cares about you much. We you know something? He does. King David, who wrote most of the Psalms, he knew that God loved him and really cared about him. How did he come to know this? By being silent, by keeping quiet, by pondering, by gazing and beholding. And if King David had to shut things down from time to time just to look at the stars, well, you got time to do so as well. So let's ponder these words of David from Psalm 8, verses 3 and 4. For when I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established, what is man? You're mindful of him, the son of man, that you do care for him. Learn how to do nothing so that God may do something great and extraordinary in and through you.